Ambassador Iran Prasad. Uh, you were born in what was Rhodesia. You then immigrated to Israel at a very young age. And then, when you were older, you earned a, bachelor, a bachelor's degree in Hebrew and English literature and a master's degree in Jewish literature from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Then you graduated the Cadets course of the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs and you have been a diplomat since then. You are married to Ofer, who is in Ireland with you and with us this evening, and you have a grown-up son and daughter. Your previous posting was as ambassador to Latvia, and this posting, I have no doubt, was an interesting one for you, as you were next door to Lithuania, where, like many Irish Jewish people, you have your roots. So, from one Litvak to another, Ambassador, you're very welcome here. Thank you. So, uh, Ambassador, when you applied for the position of Ambassador of Ireland, what did you expect? Uh, <laughs> first of all, when I apply, first of all, good evening, everybody, and I'm um, very pleased to be here and to make an acquaintance, at least by the distance, uh, looking at you and, and talking to you uh, this evening. Um, when I applied for the job, first of all, I had some kind of uh, knowledge of Ireland because I was fortunate to spend a month here quite a few years ago when Ireland uh, chaired the presidency of the EU in 2004, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I spent a month in the, in the embassy, in the old building, uh, working, but only on EU issues. So I had a great time and it was very, very interesting and I got to know at least Dublin for, for a short while. And I also visited here once uh, with my husband, like on a like semi-touristic uh, personal. So I had some kind of an inkling of what it is, but I um, I I knew that it would be, uh, let's say, uh, a challenging posting. Uh, unlike most of my other postings that were very kind of pleasant and again sometimes challenging, but on the whole very very open and, uh, and, and let's say uh, cooperative, cooperating uh, and with many, many uh, activities. And here I realize it's going to be a big challenge. So you're here now just over three months, maybe four months. Um, was it what you actually expected? Uh, and if it wasn't, what is it? What have you found here? Well, first of all, as you said, I've been here only uh, three months and I think that it will be a little bit premature of me and maybe even uh, arrogant to try and judge and already to pass judgment and uh, give a, an analysis of exactly uh, what's going on. I'm still on a, s a learning curve, I think, and I'm still uh, adjusting. Uh, but, uh, of course, as I said, it's much more challenging than being in Latvia where uh, the Middle East, for example, and what goes on between Israel and the Palestinians is a very, uh, let's say, I won't, I won't say it's of no concern, but it, it's not an issue, a very big issue. And if it is an issue from time to time, then it is also, uh, let's say, shadowed by a lot of uh, positive agenda and a lot of activity and exchanges that go on between the countries. So, in a way, you can, you, you can do a lot of activities and things. Uh, here, uh, uh, the big challenge, of course, as we all know, is uh, the ongoing, uh, let's say, from, from some people an obsession, some people a very, very strong engagement with what's going on between Israel and the Palestinians, and that uh, overshadows a little bit, uh, or to a large extent even, uh, the possibilities to cooperate, but I'm, I'm, I want to be optimistic and to, um, to strive to, to uh, push for what we call a positive agenda and to try and see uh, how much we can uh, create uh, engagement and cooperation between people, between organizations, between if it's academia or other fields or to, to get involved in activities that will uh, present Israel in the positive and correct light and also to uh, enhance our cooperation that will be benefit for both uh, countries. 
Thank you. Uh, how, how strong do you believe, uh, we know the noise, but how strong do you believe the, the pro-Palestinian uh, lobby is here? And uh, do, you, do you think that it is more anti-Israel than pro-Palestinian? Would you agree with that uh, statement? And many people believe that to be the case, that it is more anti-Israel than actually being pro-Palestinian. Well, for, in the three months I've been here, I've seen a lot of activity going on, and uh, it seems to me that the uh, groups that are pro-Palestinian are, or the activists, are very, very strong and very active here, uh, very uh, vo vocal, and uh, sometimes even uh, very aggressive in an unpleasant way. Uh, I mean, in the, the way they express themselves, which is sometimes quite horrifying. Um, and I do believe that the more then they are pro-Palestinian, they are anti-Israel. Uh, what I mean is that I think that they have this anti-Israel strain that uh, is not in the benefit of the Palestinians necessarily, and it's bashing Israel, bashing Israel, and um, uh, just being critical without seeing any nuances or not seeing anything that is beyond the black and white uh, picture. And I think it's not in the benefit of the Palestinians who, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of good things that can be done with the Palestinians, for the Palestinians, and, and quite a lot of them can be done also in cooperation with Israel or in coordination with Israel. And um, I think that would benefit them much more. Uh, when you look at the Israeli perspective of, of living, they're, they're still surrounded by many enemies such as Hamas, Hezbollah, um, Syria and, and Iran. Uh, one can see that Israel deals with these, these various enemies uh, as if they are, and I'm sure many of us would believe they are, a possible existential threat to, uh, to Israel. However, here in Ireland, the pro-Palestinian lobby uh, looks at items that uh, are perceived to be detrimental to individual Palestinians. To explain that uh, further, uh, do, do you see that the balance uh, of the different narratives between the wide-angle view that the Israelis take, uh, the very, uh, the very, uh, and the very uh, micro view that the Palestinians take, do you see, uh, and the pro-Palestinians take, do you see any way of reconciling those two views? Uh, whereas one is looking very deeply at specific problems and the, the Israelis looking very widely at a, an ex existential threat to their very being. Well, first of all, uh, as you know, Israel, even though everybody says, and it's true that we are a very strong nation and uh, we know how to defend ourselves. I think one of the most uh, dominant uh, aspects in Israeli society and psyche is this idea of uh, this existential idea and this fear of, uh, of uh, uh, fear, uh, uh, the need, let's, let's call it the need for security. That's like paramount in Israeli psyche, I think, and, and that um, overshadows everything. Um, in the recent visit of uh, Foreign Minister Kovni uh, to Israel, he met with uh, Foreign Minister Lapid, and uh, Foreign Minister Lapid quoted somebody, I, I think he was quoting somebody, I don't remember who he was quoting, but you might remember who it is, who uh, said uh, that in general, he, he believes that uh, for the Palestinians, the most important aspect in their life is the honor, respecting their honor, and for the Israelis, the most important aspect is feeling secure and, and knowing that you know security is, is is first and foremost. And even though some people say, "Oh, you know, you're such a strong nation, you can fight for your your self-defense and all," that. for Israelis, uh, anything that in a way uh, um, threatens their sense of security is 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 uh, is almost a sense of, it's an existential thing. And I think it goes back into our history into into you know um, 2000 years of history, especially the 20th century, but and also 19th century, but also before, where Jews were always you know felt the threat of being annihilated or being thrown out, kicked out or whatever, and it goes on in many many aspects in Jewish and in Israeli uh, conscious till today, even in things that sometimes we, we laugh at, but but it's all the time there, and. Um, 
and, uh, and, 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 and you know, if you look at, at, the, at Israel and, and its neighbors and, and what happens almost daily, then yes, we, we, we are in a very dangerous and very scary environment, uh, trying to protect ourselves. Hope, you know, we have Hezbollah on one side, Hamas on the other side. We have the Iranians um, pushing into many areas that they were never there before, or not in those numbers and uh, using uh, proxies like Hezbollah and Hamas and others and the Houthis in, in, Houthis in, in, in Yemen and other places. And uh, the threat is, is there, it's, it's, it's real. You know, Lebanon is in a bad situation and you know, uh, we have to monitor what's going on, not only daily, but by the hour to, to, to make sure that we are not um, threatened in a way that, that you know, have bombs so, and, and missiles falling on our heads by the hundreds. And while many Irish politicians would agree that the security of Israel uh, is paramount in any possible future peace agreement, do you think that they, uh, they acknowledge the actual threats as, a, as opposed to just paying lip service to it? In your short time here, do, do you think that politicians actually understand this existential threat? Look, I think that people don't realize how small Israel is. and. Uh... Um, Ireland, I, I used to say in Latvia all the time, ask people in Latvia, I, I would probably do the same here in Ireland. I would ask them, do you think Latvia is a small country? And everybody would say to me, yes, yes. And I would say to them, well, you know that Latvia is three times bigger than Israel. Uh, and the same goes to Ireland. And if you feel that you in a way are lucky or unfortunate the way you see it, that you're an island, so you don't have immediate neighbors right on your borders, but Israel is a, in a way an island surrounded by, by neighbors that not all of them are very friendly, and um, we are a very, very small country uh, geographically, and um, therefore I don't think that people here realize it so much, they probably think that Israel is much bigger and larger. Uh, than it actually is. And I think also that if you don't visit Israel and don't spend a few days at least traveling in Israel and realizing its size and realizing uh, how close everything is and how everything is, is intertwined and connected, and, and even with the Palestinian issue, if you don't see it with your eyes, and again, not everything you have to accept, not everything you have to agree with, the things that you, you, know, you might not like, or, or you, but if you see it and realize the reality on the ground, and I think it's much more uh, feasible and understandable, uh, you know, the feelings that Israelis have, and, 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 the, and the whole issue and, the, and, the, and the, the situation that exists in, in Israel. Yes, I, I, I know there's lots of people who don't realize that Israel is about the size of, of Munster or Leinster here, just uh, almost a quarter of the size of Ireland. And one last question for you, again in your short time here, uh, how have you been generally received? Very well. I mean, I think that uh, COVID uh, is a problem and because of that, the much less meetings would have, you know, than I would have liked. And I think, that, you know, if I would have been here two or three years ago, I probably would have met by now much, many more people and many and got, also gone out of Dublin and, and visited other places which I haven't done yet, unfortunately, and I plan to do. But uh, the people I've met so far officially and also just in the street or in a reception or wherever I was, in the, in the store, uh, where, all been very welcoming, very friendly, very nice, um, uh, very open, and, uh, and that's why I'm also optimistic because I believe that, you know, if I do go and meet people and get out of, uh, you know, my office and get out of Dublin also and, and move away from the political arena as much as possible uh, and try to connect to people and to create some kind of activity and friendships, I think that uh, maybe we have some hope. <laughs> for developing our relationships further than they were developed till now. Well, um, Ambassador, I'm sure people later on will have lots of questions for you. Ambassador Barsida, thank you very much. <laughs>